What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Nathan JL and I'm here to bring you guys some more Tarkov content as part of the Tarkov Bootcamp series part two. And in part two today, we're gonna cover how to survive a raid as well as some useful tips and tricks to uh, really up your game and get you guys more comfortable with the mechanics of the game. So uh, without further ado, let's get things started. If your guys experience with Escape from Tarkov from the beginning was anything like mine when I first started this game, you already know how unforgiving this game can really be. We're going to share some tips and tricks with you guys that really help take the edge off of the starting game and help the low levels or entry level players really step their foot into the Escape from Tarkov world. We're going to start things off with the first tip of practice, practice, practice. I know, I know. Thanks for the advice, dad. No, but I mean practice in offline mode. Get a hang of the demon you're wrestling with before you dive in head first, if you will. You can try a new loadout, practice PvP and gun skills, get familiar with loot spawns or extracts, or just try out some new settings. You can play around with your keybinds or whatever it is, really. Offline mode is your friend here. You don't lose whatever you bring in with you, but you also don't keep anything you find, so forget looting for this part. In order to access the offline raid mode, go to Escape from Tarkov, select your PMC, Select the map that you'd like to practice on. Then right here, you'll select enable offline mode for this raid. If you want to enable the PVE where you fight against AI scavs, you can choose their difficulty and the amount. I usually go with easy and then horde and then just hit ready. This will allow you to practice all the skills that you want to practice without the risk of dying to other PMCs or the big one of losing your loot to other PMCs because you're just inexperienced. The offline mode is also a really great way and my personal favorite way of warming up before I just jump into a raid with a full loadout of gear and risking that not knowing if I'm even ready to play the game for the day. So use this to your advantage as a warm up as well as an ability to learn the maps risk free. Something you'll run into as a beginner player is that you only have level one vendors or merchants and I just wanted to cover really quick what's available to you guys um, so that you can jump right into it. From Papor, we've got the SKS paired with the 7.62 by 39 PS ammo, AKS 74U paired with the 5.45 by 39 T rounds. We've got the PP19 paired with 9 by 18 EST GZH rounds. We've got the Mosin infantry rifle paired with 7.62 times 54R ammo. You've got the TT pistol paired with the AKBS ammo. From Mechanic, you've got the Glock 17 paired with 9x19 PST GZH ammo, which for 9x19 rounds, that's gonna be the best that's available to you for a little while. From the Fence, you'll have to check out his wares because they rotate every hour. So sometimes you can pick up a good deal from him. So just keep an eye on him every hour or so um, and see what he's got for wares. And then from Jaeger, once you've unlocked him by doing the introduction quest from the Mechanic, he's got a Shotgun MP133 which you can pair with LED slugs. As far as trade-ups go, this is when you find items and then barter with those items to trade up for weapons in the future. But this is just to give you an idea when you're around collecting items, what to keep an eye out for. So my favorite trade-up that I still do to this day is to Peacekeeper level one, and he's got an MP5 for eight brown knives that you can find from scavs. He's also got a P226 9 by 19 millimeter pistol, which you can trade up for four gray knives, which you also find from scavs. At skier level one, one of my absolute favorite guns in the game is the ADAR215, and that's traded up for one rechargeable battery and two chainlets. So the next best gun you can use as a beginner player in the game is the gun you didn't pay for. And scav runs are a great way to collect guns early on in the game and fill your stash up with guns that you can then use in future raids to kill PMCs and then snowball and take their gear. So every 20 minutes you get a scav run and essentially what that is is just it allows you to run as an AI scav. You spawn in as a player scav at a random time on the map that you choose and your objective is to stop other PMCs from extracting. You will get a random set of gear and a random weapon and random loadout and even sometimes rare spawn items. And um, if you extract with that gear, then you get to keep all of that as well as everything else you found in the raid while you're scaving around. So I think it's really important to use your scav runs every 20 minutes as a beginner player. And it also teaches you to not have gear fear when you collect a stash full of guns that you really didn't even have to work for that hard. And I think that's incredibly beneficial to beginner players. 
Scav runs can be run multiple ways. You can go in and just immediately extract and take the kit for yourself to use in the next raid on your PMC. Or you can really try to learn the maps and kill other PMCs and get the hang of PvP and test out the different weapons that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. So it's really up to you guys. But again, it's just another mechanic in the game that sort of takes the risk out of the reward in the game, which I think is a really nice balance, especially for beginner players and even later on in the game. The next tip that I can offer to you guys, and this is a really big one in my opinion, in Tarkov especially, but if you come over from any other FPS game, the objective is essentially just to mash the W button and sprint across the map. But in Tarkov, you've got to take things a little bit slower, and that would probably be the biggest point I can give you guys. In Tarkov, you'll find that, especially early on, that you can get killed pretty quickly. To an experienced player, your running footsteps are like a beacon screaming, come murder me, I don't want my gear anyway. Don't get me wrong, sprinting is necessary, but it's not all the time thing like in Call of Duty. When you're near cover or feel like you're concealed by brush or some sort of structure, try taking it slower and just walking. Try taking a minute and listening to the surroundings around you or listen to what's going on around you. When you're out in the open, sprint like there's a grizzly bear on your trail. I mean, don't get me wrong, sprinting is something that's necessary in a lot of gunfights and maneuvering the map, but just try to slow it down. The ability to slow down and to listen to the things around you, like I said earlier, and to be able to observe your surroundings will ultimately benefit you in the end. You learn where loot spawns, places to hide, angles to hold, or get the chance to hear someone running in your direction, all because you just slowed it down a little bit. So a next quick tip for you guys is audio, and you'll see a picture of the headsets I've put up here on the screen for you guys, but headsets increase your audio hearing range, or the range at which you can hear audio, such as footsteps, crunching of glass or wood on the ground, bush movements, people opening loot crates, doors, etc. Early in the game, you can only have access to the GSSHs here on the far left, and you can purchase those from Ragman for about 16,000 rubles, I guess. Um, some people don't like them, but I, I personally don't mind them. Um, the next ones up are the Comtax, and those are a little bit more expensive. I believe you unlock those at Ragman level 2, and they're like 23,000 rubles. The other ones here over to the right, so we've got the Sword in, the Tactical Sport, and the Razors. Um, they're all really good quality headphones. Um, the ones that I prefer the most, I think, are the Tactical Sports and the GSSHs, and I'll use both of those as I get them. But Audio plays back into the last point that we made, which is that if you slow things down a little bit and listen to your surroundings and get a feel for what's going on around you, and you also pair it with a headset in game, it will greatly increase your awareness of what's going on around you. Um, and I just find that it's incredibly helpful. Where there's one plan, there's none. Where there's two plans, there's one. This is a survivalist saying that essentially means if you don't have a backup plan, you might as well have no plan whatsoever. The same is true in Escape from Tarkov. Think about what it is you're doing, your positioning, your options, what the closest hardcover looks like that's available to you, all while you're running through the map. When you go into a corner or a hallway, have your weapon aiming down sights already in anticipation of someone being there. After killing someone, maybe wait a minute and see if any rats come out of the woodwork to check up on the gunshots before running out to loot the corpse you just downed. Before looting a crate, clear the room in anticipation of a rat hiding in the corner. Check the angles, check behind the doors, check near the filing cabinets, whatever is possible. Remember, this is a hardcore game and nobody wants what you have more than the enemy. So prepare yourself for the worst. The final tip I want to offer to you guys today is map knowledge. And just like in any other game you've probably ever played before, whether it be Rainbow Six Siege, PUBG, Call of Duty, you learned the maps. And in those first couple games or matches until you actually understood the map and the corners and the hiding places of it, you were at a huge disadvantage. So in Escape from Tarkov, there's many different maps and tons of different ways to play it. But I guess what I can say is map knowledge is sort of king in this because if you take the time to learn a map, then take the extra time to actually master it. Learn it like the back of your hand and or at the very least learn where the other PMT spawns are. So that way you know how to approach the map and what to do when you first spawn, where to go, where you are essentially. And um, for me, I found that when I found like a looting route, if you will, like a route that I follow every time, it really just, I felt more comfortable on the map and it was just so much more enjoyable. 
As far as which maps to learn first, it's really personal preference. I personally learned customs first, like the back of my hand, and then slowly got into factory as I needed more quests on factory. And if you look around on the forums or in other YouTube videos, you'll find that a lot of people recommend that beginner players learn customs first because you have a lot of quests that start you there. But if that's not the map for you, then you can learn a bunch of other maps. There's, there's interchange, you've got reserve, you've got shoreline, woods, there's a lot of possibilities there for you, and it all comes down to really what you feel like getting into. So I think that's going to wrap it up for us today, guys. And I really want to thank you guys for taking the time to spend time watching my video again. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed part two of the Tarkov bootcamp, and I'm really looking forward to getting more content out there in regards to Escape from Tarkov. If you want to let me know in the comments down below what you think should be in addition to the Tarkov bootcamp series, I would love to hear you guys' feedback. And you guys, at the end of the day, are the reason that I make content. So um, I'm really looking forward to hearing back from you guys. And again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. And uh, until the next one.